Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2012 Chevy Cruze that drove here. Customer complaint is it just runs rough, low powered, maybe misfires, but it, it certainly doesn't run well. <laughs> um, I'll just turn it on and let you listen to the engine. So it doesn't sound like a misfire. <laughs> you can hear it's really looks kind of erratic. I hear what might be what kind of sounds like a vacuum leak, but again, it's a turbocharged engine, so the PCV system is uh, probably not straightforward. So let's jump in. Read some trouble codes and see what we're uh, what we're up against here. It's idling really poorly, but seems to rev up okay. If you put it under a load, seems to have decent power there, and then it just stalls out. So definitely an idle problem, suspecting something to do with the fuel mixture. But let's jump into the Think Tool Pros and scan it for codes. All right, we got three modules with codes. There are 18 trouble codes in the engine computer. Wow. <laughs> let's see what those are. We'll save the report pre-repair. Open it up. All right, here we go. Intake air temperature sensor, two, circuit low voltage, engine coolant flow insufficient, map sensor performance, map sensor high voltage, intake air temp high voltage, engine coolant temp, sensor high voltage, delayed response, lean to ridge bank one sensor one, fuel system lean, Engine overboost, two recharger boost sensor performance, turbo boost sensor circuit low voltage, NOx sensor system performance, generator L terminal circuit, intake airflow system performance, intake air temp sensor three, circuit high voltage, intake air humidity sensor circuit low voltage, barometric pressure barrel sensor performance, barometric sensor performance circuit low voltage, system low voltage, battery voltage. Okay, what would you do in this case? In this case, since the car is acting up and we saved the full report, I'm going to clear all the trouble codes out and just look at live data with the engine off first. And then we'll run it and look at the data with the engine on and see if anything jumps out. So let's back out of here. Clear all DTCs. I don't know if anyone's been messing with this car or not, but okay, so we do have a map sensor performance right away, 106, very interesting. Let's enter that, read fault code. That w definitely would explain, you know, poor idle. So what's our map voltage right now? Let's read data stream. And induction data usually has good you know, voltage and the actual pressure. So let's just select all. And look at these data pits. So reference five, reference three, five volts are okay. Accelerator pedal position. I'll press it. It goes up, that's fine. Ambient air temp, 75 degrees, looks fine. Barrel is 14.2. Barrel sensor, 3.82 volts, that's reasonable. Boost pressure, zero. Boost pressure sensor is 14 PSI. 1.8 volts, okay. Calculated barrel, ECT. 
engine load, runtime, RPM, oxygen sensors, IET sensor 1, 102 degrees, 91 degrees, 84 degrees, that's reasonable. MAF sensor, MAP sensor 33.2 PSI, 3.82 volts. Okay, that I don't like because <laughs> it's basically saying, well, close to atmosphere, we should be at like 20, you know, 27 or 28 PSI, not 33. So that's kind of off. Anything else here? Okay, so that's the only thing that jumps out of me to begin with. Now, let's unselect all this stuff and just select the sensors that we're interested in. All right, so let's focus on the MAF and the MAP sensor. Let's start it up. Five grams per second there. Map sensor. Okay. So I'm assuming one atmosphere would be, you know, 14 psi, right? So actually, I was wrong. One atmosphere. If the engine's off, I expect this to read about 14 psi like just like the boost pressure sensor and the barrel so so we're at one atmosphere so this map sensor I don't like right away so let's go right there right now unplug the thing make sure we're going after the right sensor so I assume it's this one right here so I'm gonna unplug it and just watch that voltage, the 3.82 volts. Of course, I'm going to wiggle the wiring harness. That seems to be okay. And unplug it. Zero PSI, zero volts. Now, let's run this thing with the map sensor unplugged. It should set the 107 code. So boost pressure sensor. So we did get a little boost there. Okay, so it doesn't really want to rev up. Okay, you can build some boost in reverse. Put it back in park. Let's read the trouble code one more time. Obviously it's not happy. Okay, so 107 circuit low. And since the performance was because it was reading the, long, the wrong, uh, you know, voltage. It's very similar to the Chevy Malibu we just did. The 2012, which also had the P0106 code and with the wrong voltage, it was doing all kinds of weird stuff. So not too surprising. Let me look at one more thing here and that would be the fuel trims. So let's just go to engine data. It's the ECT sensor. Oxygen sensor one and two. Long term fuel trim. Short term trim. Let's try that. 
Look, long-term trim is at 35%, and our sensor is oscillating. That's pretty nuts. Short-term trim is 22%. This thing's running way lean. MAF sensor is 2.3 grams per second, running very lean. Look at that. 35 and 36 percent and we're lean on the O2 sensor. That's nuts. So why is this thing running lean? I'm plugging the MAP sensor. I don't think would do that. Might be several, several issues. So I'm just preloading in drive. Our long-term trim is zero. Our short-term trim is seven. I'm going to let off the gas a little bit. Look at that. Long-term trim spikes right back up. Short term trim is going to spike right back up too. There it is, it's climbing, we're running lean. Under a little load. Seems to run great. So to me that screams vacuum leak, right? That's pretty crazy. Let's see here, there's the air intake, there's our mass airflow, everything's disconnected here. There's our turbocharger, and then, where's our uh, intercooler here? So it goes down to the intercooler, through here, there's the boost sensor, there's the throttle body. I don't know why it's running so lean right now. Okay, so very simple check under the hood. We've got three wires, let's check them all. First one is the five volt reference. Second one is a good ground. Third one is, there we go, 3.8 volts. Now, Wiring is good. The sensor is giving us 3.8 volts. On the Malibu, that's exactly what we saw at atmosphere. And that translated to 14 PSI. On this engine, that sensor has to have a bigger range because it's turbocharged. So it should go from like, you know, up to one atmosphere above atmosphere. So 30, whatever, 40 PSI, right? absolute pressure. I'll tell you right now that sensor does not belong on this car because it's meant for a naturally aspirated engine and this one is a turbocharged engine. So first thing we need a good a known good MAP sensor. Okay without that the engine will not um, will not run. What we could do is modify this voltage using a decade box to something more reasonable so it reads you know, one atmosphere and whatever, and see if the fuel trims come down and if it's happy, um, basically kind of trick it just so it thinks it has a good sensor, but that's one problem. Now, will that fix it? I don't know, but <laughs> I think someone already tried to fix it and they put a wrong sensor on this thing. All right, so here's the decade box, and we're measuring the signal. So if you turn up the resistance, we'll get our 3.8 volts. And if you turn it down to less than 100 ohms, so right now we're at 90, we get 1.65, and that corresponds to about 13.2 PSI. So now the car should, will think that we're at atmosphere, that it has the correct sensor, and when it starts and runs, We'll, uh, we'll see wh exactly what happens. Now that pressure should drop to the idle. That should be like 5 PSI because we're not boosting. So let's see, let's see what happens here. So we're still running very lean, but the map sensor barely changed. 
what I don't like is, does the engine have vacuum? <laughs> you know? So we can increase the, or decrease the resistance, see how the engine reacts. So right now we're like six PSI. I don't think that does much to change anything at all. Let's uh, clear fault code. Yes. Okay, fault code completed. And let's just see. Read fault code again. No DTCs. You know it's running super lean. So we need A, the correct map sensor, and then we can move with the rest of the diagnosis. One other thing I noticed is that there's quite a bit of vacuum in the crankcase. So if you look at our mass airflow reading, mass sensor, if I release the dipstick, will it run any better? No. Map is reading higher, I'll put that back in. There's quite a bit of vacuum in that crankcase, that, that's not a good thing. So on all data, one thing that's uh, very useful to check, especially on cars that have uh, weird engines, <laughs> like PCV systems on turbo cars, they could have very specific problems. So there's an article here, customer complaints engine idle goes up and down, dash warning light is on, tech verified idle does fluctuate, we have 106, 171, 1101 are set. Okay. Engine races. Recommend to follow this TSB. Possible oil consumption, oil leaks, blue smoke from exhaust, or fuel trim codes. Tech found a vacuum leak at camshaft cover breather port. If you replace the camshaft cover according to TSB, now the engine idles normally and the codes do not reset. Breather at top of cam cover leaking. Excessive vacuum in cover. Difficult to remove oil cap while engine running prior to cover replacement. That's exactly what's going on with our car. PIP 5197 is correct repair for this concern. So what is 5197? This is the official TSB. And conditioner concern, excessive oil consumption, blue smoke. Um, and you can have the 171. And if it's bad enough, I'm sure it'll cause a um, unstable idle. So refer to check engine oil dipstick fill cap for proper sealing. It definitely seals well. It's whistling. There's too much vacuum in the crankcase for sure. Check PC orifice for leaking oil or drawing vacuum at idle through its external port. Okay, this is interesting. PC orifice is an integral part of the camshaft cover. See picture below. Please note a weak or broken piston ring lamp cause a P0300. It may also damage PC orifice diaphragm, causing a P0171. The PC orifice external port is leaking oil or vacuum. Replace the camshaft cover assembly. Clean all oil from induction system components and retest oil consumption. Check for a missing intake manifold non-return valve. Okay, this is interesting. Then we have damaged the PCV orifice diaphragm. See pictures below for inspection procedure. So we remove this hose and you look in there. If non-return valve is not visible as shown in picture, use a long cotton swab to wipe any excess oil from the valve to validate. If the non-return valve is not visible, then intake manifold removal for inspection is required to validate. If the valve is present, reinstalled intake manifold do not replace. Properly seated non-return valve is viewed from the intake manifold 
with the intake manifold removed. If the intake manifold and non-return valve is missing, replace the intake manifold assembly. Weird. If intake manifold and non-return valve is seated properly and perform the following. Record the crank crankcase pressure. Normal pressure is between 11 and 18 inches of water in park at hot idle. So that's very, very low vacuum. We have basically intake manifold vacuum in our crankcase. Um, connection must be made with the engine off, engine started. Da, da, da. Okay. Warranty information. Intake manifold replacement, camshaft cover replacement. Well, what's the problem with our cruise here then? I took off this little thing and I don't know, it just looks kind of gunky in there. And then, but this hose goes to our intake line. What does that have to do with the actual camshaft cover? That's what I don't understand. Where is the PCV system hiding in this thing? I guess we can pop this off. Okay, so this must be the PCV port. It doesn't look like it's leaking anything. Ah, oh, man, this is such a strange system. What actually connects to the camshaft cover to cause the vacuum? That's what I don't understand. So this just drives home the point that without information, no one would be able to fix these cars. Research is absolutely essential. So here's a, an article, possible uh, the same uh, TSB with the 1.4 turbo. So probable causes, camshaft cover assembly, Fill cap, we don't, you know, oil dipstick is fine. Intake manifold assembly, intake system air leaks, which we don't have. Cylinder head porosity, interesting. Bad PCV in valve cover. Intake manifold down return valve is missing or not properly seated, then replace the intake manifold assembly. So, I guess we can check through this port with a boroscope or something. And then, if the PCV orifice external port is leaking oil or vacuum, replace the camshaft cover assembly. If the intake manifold non-return valve is seated properly, then proceed to the next step. So we have to check this non-return valve first and foremost. And... If crankcase pressure is excessively negative below 30 inches of water, that's our case. Um, the PCV port through the cylinder head, shown in picture below 1 and 2, may have a porosity issue causing intake vacuum to leak into the crankcase. This shows you the quality of these engines is in the toilet. Like Scotty Kilmer says, you can have porosity in your cylinder head, for crying out loud. <laughs> So they want you to plug this port, remove the intake manifold, plug this port, and pour water or liquid in here, and see if it if the level goes down. They'll indicate that you have porosity in there. I guess you can also pressurize it. But that's ridiculous. And 17 verified repairs. Okay, replace camshaft cover. I had a vacuum leak in the opening. Could hear a leak when placing a finger over the opening. The map sensor started reading correctly, graphing it, replaced the valve cover in the middle light reset, tore the bad valve cover apart, found the diaphragm was torn, causing the vacuum leak. Okay, that's interesting. Camshaft cover assembly. He had a vacuum leak on the opening of 
I'm guessing right here. Okay. Place camshaft car, no further issues. Found camshaft car leaking vacuum at the external port. 1101 stored in memory. That's not our case. So camshaft cover seems to be very common. Replace the valve cover previously, now it's back. Accelerating how you can hear the air leak engine tech spec found. Intake manifold gasket was leaking, resealed the intake, clear codes fixed. And inner cooler is leaking. Oh my gosh. PCV hose between the turbo and the intake manifold had a bad check valve and was replaced. The new PCV hose restored normal idle. That's not our our problem. I'm going to guess since we have a problem with the intake manifold sucking too much vacuum from the crankcase that that return whatever check valve is going to be our issue. So let's uh, let's do a visual inspection. Okay, so boroscope to the rescue here. We're looking towards this side with the side inspection camera. You can see the light. And what I see is what's supposed to be the location of that non-return valve. You can see the holes, but there's no red diaphragm there. So that valve must have gotten sucked into the intake manifold. That sucks. So now we have full intake manifold vacuum going to the uh, the crankcase. That's it. Crazy stuff. Now, let's say you're under boost and you have positive pressure building in the crankcase. This hose is supposed to bring it back to the intake to atmospheric pressure, so that, that makes sense. But that non-return valve, basically when you're under boost, that diaphragm is supposed to plug that hole so you don't get positive pressure being forced into your crankcase. But under vacuum, I guess it's supposed to slightly suck the PCV gases uh, in. And, I mean, where, where's the vent for the crankcase? Is it this little, little hole here? I'm guessing that could be it. But this thing needs a new intake manifold. That's just completely ridiculous. I want to pop this piece off right here and see if there's a, a pour right here that's uh, still good. So on this side, there is a little rubber diaphragm, but it doesn't completely seal. So if I blow and suck on this side, well, it does seal. Just this little ring was in the way. Let's see. Yeah, so that's good. So positive pressure can return but when it's under vacuum, it will not suck any air through there. So this hose is fine. Our camshaft cover is not leaking, but we have excessive crankcase vacuum due to a bad intake manifold. That's the diagnosis on this. Plus, I'm pretty sure that this map sensor is not intended for this car, so it would need an intake manifold and a map sensor. Crazy, crazy diagnosis. I assume the customer is going to want it fixed, so I'll give him a quote. And if he wants it fixed, there'll be a part two. But thanks a lot for watching. Modern cars, information is crucial, and then doing the proper tests. So see you guys next time. Bye bye. So, very interesting here. This hole does have vacuum on it. I'm pretty sure that's where what our vacuum leak is. So let's look at the data with that plug. It's, I don't know if that's like a safety vent or something. 
and I don't really care. All right, so let's look at our short and long-term trims. There's the action sensor. You drop them like a rock. I'm gonna plug this hole. I mean, then the intake crankcase is under extreme vacuum, but look at our short-term trim. It's going to zero. The long-term fuel trim should at least be in control now. If we let that go, short-term trim is gonna skyrocket. So do we need a cam cover as well? It's in the TSB. I mean, might as well replace it if they go bad. I don't know if that diaphragm got overloaded by the extreme vacuum and now it's shot too. Oh, it's not happy. <laughs> wow.